Hello, and welcome to this second EOMOFA webinar. My name is Eirik Hess, and I'm an analyst in the EOMOFA team. Today, I'll present the web page and describe and show how to use, understand, and obtain the most of the EOMOFA tool. First, some practical information about the webinar. All participants are muted by default, but you can interact with a team of Yomofa experts throughout the webinar by writing your questions in the questions section in the dashboard. Some questions might be answered directly, but we will also answer questions in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. If we are unable to answer all questions today, written answers will be provided to all participants by next week. This webinar is also being recorded. And by next week, we'll provide a link to the video, which will be available on our webpage. The video will also be subtitled in English, French, and Spanish. Okay, so let's start at the top. UMOFA is an acronym for the European Market Observatory for Fisheries and Aquaculture. It is an intelligence tool on the Euro European Union fisheries and aquaculture sector, developed by the European Commission. The web page and all its content are openly available and free of charge. It aims to increase market transparency and efficiency to support business decisions and policy making. We do this through dissemination of data and expert intelligence throughout the supply chain of the seafood sector. The first market we observe is at the first sales stage, when the fish is sold for the first time. Still, we we'll provide Eurostat's yearly statistics of landings and aquaculture production. We then follow the fish through wholesale, international trade and processing before it reaches its final destination, retail and consumption. Data can be accessed in different formats, such as dashboards, predefined tables, advanced tables and bulk downloads. We also publish recurrent yearly and monthly publications such as the EU fish market and monthly highlights. And in addition, we publish price structure analysis and different thematic analysis. The web page is available in 24 different EU languages. To make sure you're up to date on the latest developments and publications from EMOFA, we highly recommend you sign up for the newsletter by subscribing to the mailing list. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us through the webpage. You can call us or send us an email and the contact information is available under help in the top menu. The main sections of the webpage are accessible through the menu on the left-hand side. On the front page, there are also shortcuts to several subsections, either to the latest publications directly to a selection of subsections or to the latest news. In this webinar, I'll walk you through the three main sections and some of their subsections. Finally, I'll give you some practical demonstrations on how to extract data from our databases. So first, let's take a look at the available studies and reports. Basically, there are four different types of EUMOFA publications. The EU fish market, which aims at providing an economic description of the whole European fisheries and aquaculture industry. The monthly highlights, which delivers analysis of the EU fish market, specifically focusing on monthly first sales, imports from extra EU countries, consumption and an overview of EU macroeconomic features relevant for the seafood sector. Each month, this publication also contains two comprehensive reports on specific topics. We also have the price structure analysis, which helps to understand links between prices at different levels of the supply chain. Each study focuses on a specific species or product with examples from relevant European countries. We also have thematic analysis. These are comprehensive studies on a specific seafood-related topic. For example, we have consumer habits, 
cross-border investments in agriculture, the blue bioeconomy, a study on caviar, and market outlets for unwanted catches. This section also includes collections of the species and country profiles developed for the monthly highlights. The next page I'll show you is the EU market overview on the top left hand side here. This section this section contains a st structural information of the European fisheries and aquaculture industry in the form of country and species profiles. EU fish market contains a profile at EU level. The subpage contains the most recent available estimates on the EU supply balance and a PDF file with an EU profile with key figures from the whole supply chain from an overview of the fishing fleet through landings, aquaculture production, first sales, trade, wholesale, retail and consumption. The country profiles provide key figures from the whole supply chain for each member state in the same format and structure as the EU profile. You can either click on the member state in the map or in the links on the right hand side menu. The species profiles provide market information and data along the supply chain on the most important species for the EU market. All profiles are available as PDFs, both to read in the browser or download. Now, let us dive into the sea of data that is available in EMOFA. So let's go to the data page on the left-hand side. So EMOFA collects, harmonize, and disseminate weekly, monthly, or yearly data for each stage of the seafood supply chain. By clicking on the different supply chain stages, you'll find a description of the supply chain stage and information about the available data. One important definition is the one on first sale. The data are recorded as the landed fish is sold or registered at an auction center to registered buyers or producer organizations. The first sale volumes may differ from landings since the former do not cover direct sales to processors or fish that is landed by vessels vert vertically integrated with processors. Keep this in mind when you start using and analyzing the data. Another important definition is the difference between extra and intra EU trade. Intra trade record the trade of goods between member states. Extra EU trade record goods entering or leaving the territory of the EU. The data for the different supply chain stages can in general be accessed in three different ways. You have simple tables with predefined layout and limited options for user adjustments. We have advanced tables where the user can build tailor-made queries. And we also have the bulk download option where you can download whole data sets. They can be downloaded in CSV format and the data will be downloaded in the language selected in the menu at top of the page. So follow the link to the download page and select the data set you're interested in. This table also shows you the size and when the data set was last modified or updated. In addition, there are dashboards. Uh, we have one on raw materials and other costs. We have a macroeconomic dashboard and we also have an interactive map of first sales. For each supply chain stage, the sources of data page give an overview of the different sources. 
EMOFA relies on direct reporting from the member states, publicly available data, and private data providers. As you will learn, the amount of available data differs between the different supply chain stages. So for example, we can go into first sale, and then we see the different sources we collect data from, from the different member states. For more details on the data collection, there's a separate metadata. You can find it here or through the main data page, where we have a, a menu option here for metadata. So this page contains descriptions of the data collection methodologies specifying the types of data, the frequency, the time lag, the origin, etc. And there is a separate metadata document uh, documenting EOMOFA's data management and harmonization. Later on, we'll get more familiar with the metadata, uh, but for now, I will go back to the main data page and we will look closer at the harmonization. Because the harmonization of data that takes place in EOMOFA is essential to understand and make use of the data. EMOFA harmonized the data to enable users to compare and follow the different products along the supply chain stages. The different data sources had different granularity and definitions in terms of species and product names, preservation states and presentation states, as well as different currencies. For example, there are more than 4,000 FAO3 alpha codes specifying the different fish species. And in 2020, there were more than 500 unique product codes in Eurostat's trade statistics for seafood products. When also combining trade statistics from more than 60 other non-EU countries, there are potentially thousands of different product codes in the trade data alone. So in EOMOFA, we have systemized and aggregated these codes into 108 main commercial species abbreviated MCS. For example, COD, which is MCS number 13, is an aggregate of six FAO species, more specifically Arctic COD, Northern CODs, Atlantic COD, Greenland COD, Pacific COD, and Polar COD. Now, these 108 MCS are classified in 12 commodity groups. So again, if we take COD as the example, together with 13 other MCS, they are classified as ground fish. Now, the different preservation and presentation states from the data sources are aggregated to five presentation states and eight preservation states. We can just quickly have a look at what they are. So we have preservation states like live and fresh, frozen, smoked, and so on. And we have presentation states, which are whole gutted, other cuts, fillets, and byproducts, and unspecified. So in this diagram, by clicking the different boxes, you get access to the relevant definitions and correlation tables, which are also available from the previously visited metadata page. The bottom line here is that the data in the EMOFA database follows these harmonized standards, and it can be a good idea to get familiar with the data management to fully understand the available data in EMOFA. Now, going back to the main data page, a first example of this harmonization is the EU supply balance sheet. When all the yearly data on production, fisheries and trade are available from Eurostat, EMOFA calculates apparent consumption by main commercial species and commodity groups. This is also an example of a predefined simple table where the only choice for the user is to select which year to display in the table. So this first table 
shows the data in the apparent consumption formula by commodity group. So we have the formula up here, and we have all the different data in the table. So we can quickly see that ground fish is the most consumed commodity group. By clicking the commodity group, we can investigate further on MCS or main commercial species level. And we here see that cod is the most consumed species. Now let's go back to the main data page and take a look at the advanced tables and I'll also show you some practical demonstrations of extracting data. So the advanced query tool is identical for all advanced queries. And you can access data in the different supply chain stages. As you will see, for trade or import or export, there are both weekly, monthly, and yearly data, while for landings, only yearly data are available. And for the retail consumption part, only weekly data is available. But since all the advanced queries are identical, let's just look at the monthly European Union first sale table. So, the top bar here contains information relevant for the advanced tables. On the left-hand side, it states which database we selected or entered into. So, for this example, it's the monthly European Union database. The Data Supply Monitor takes us to a simple table where we can find information of the latest available data from the different sources. So, when it was updated, basically. There are also links to help page with video tutorials for both first sale and trade queries. The question marks take you through a guided tour of the advanced query page. And the orange M mark document contains the metadata for the current database. Now the advanced table view mainly consists of three sections. You have fields and measures on the left-hand side, we have filters on the right-hand side and the ad hoc view in the middle. Fields and measures contains all the parameters available in the database. The fields are used to filter your extraction and together with measures build the table. Filters on the right-hand side is where we filter out and select the data we are interested in viewing. By adding different fields, we narrow down and focus on the content we are interested in. When we have applied the filters, we can start building our table by adding fields and measures as columns or rows in the table. When you're satisfied with the table, the view can be downloaded as open source document, Excel file, or a comma separated file. So let me now show you some practical demonstrations. And remember, the recording of this webinar will be available on our webpage. So you can go back and look at it in your own pace later. When Europe went into lockdown during March this year due to COVID-19, the Horeca segment was hit hard, especially with the closure of restaurants and cafes. Now, France is one of the major EU fishing nations of turbot a typically out-of-home consumption species. So let's look at the development of first sales of turbot in France over the past two and a half years. So we go to data. We want to enter an advanced table of monthly data for the European Union. And we start by adding filters. So first, for the monthly European Union database 
there are several supply chain stages available in the same database. So we have to add a filter for the supply chain stage. You can either right click and create filter or you can drag and drop. Now, for each field added as a filter, you'll see two tabs. You have the available options and you have the selected options. You can also change how to apply the filter. So you can choose one from the list. You can have some search that contains uh, a specific word or other options. At all times, you can select or deselect all the available options. Finally, the whole field can be removed from filters from the menu in the top right corner. Okay, so we have to select first sale because we are interested in first sale in France. It could be a good idea to double check on the selected tab that we have chosen the right one and only the one we're interested in. Now let's add more filters. Let's add year so we can narrow us our search for the past two and a half years. We can add product because we want to look at the main commercial species turbot. And we need a location. So we will filter out country and only look at France. So we have four filters here, supply chain stage, year, main commercial species, and country. So let's select 18, 19, and 20, and double check that we have made the right selection. We will scroll down or search for turbot. and we will select France as the country. Now, when I selected France in this last filter, the apply button became available. When we have not selected or made a choice in all the filters, it's not possible to apply the filters. And unless you apply the filters, they won't be active when we start building our table. So we, every time we add or change some filters, we have to make sure to hit apply. Now we can build our table. And we do that by dragging or right clicking on the different measures and fields and add them to the data or to the table, sorry. So we can start by adding year to columns. And we then see only the three years we filtered out earlier. We can continue by adding month of year to rows. So now we have a matrix with years and months. Finally, let's add the volume. Okay, so here we have the monthly volumes of first sales of turbot in France. We see that especially April and May in 2020 have substantially lower volumes compared to the two previous years. However, the monthly volumes seem to vary all years, which might reveal some seasonality. Let's change the view now and look at the time series in a chart. So from the menu on top here, you can choose to show the data in a chart. 
Now this first view only shows the totals. So this is the total of all months in all three years. But on the top right corner here, we have some new options, the data level section. So we can change the appearance of the chart by toggling the data levels and by moving fields between rows and columns. So by first toggling the columns data level, we can divide the data in years. However, 2020 is not complete. We don't have all months of 2020. So let's also toggle the rows level. Now we can compare each month of 2020 with the previous two years. And already from this view, the seasonality is apparent with a higher volume from April through July. We can also clearly see how the COVID-19 has affected the volumes in 2020 with substantial lower volumes in the high season months of April and May. As Europe slowly opened during June, the volumes increase, but June and July are still lower compared to 2018 and 2019. The volumes in August, however, are closer to normal. Now let's look at this as a continuous time series. We can move years down to row, and we should get a continuous time series. So here we have years from the months 1 to 12. It would also be interesting to see the development of prices. So let's add prices to the measures in columns. Of course, on the same axis, we cannot see the prices. So let's change the chart type to a dual axis chart. Now the measures are shown as bars and a line. Next, let's take a closer look at the months from the lockdown starting in March until the gradual opening, let's say July, and compare these three years. We're only interested in the months between March and July for these three years. We then add another filter. So we add month of year to filters. And when it appears, we can choose Yeah, so let's choose three, four, five, six, and seven. To make this filter active, we have to hit apply. As you can see, we only now see months three to seven for all three years. We can then toggle the data level back to year. And now we have a comparison of the same period in the three years, the total. So say now we're interested in downloading this data. By going back to the cross tab view, The data remains the same, the filters remains the same, and the way we organized rows and columns remains the same. 
So what we can do now is we can move year back up to columns to get the cross table view. And we can now download this view either as an open source document, a comma separated file or an Excel format. And these are all available here. And what you download is the current view of the table. So if you want to add some more months, you have to apply different filters and then hit download. So let's say we're interested in knowing more about the data behind this query. We can follow the metadata link And for now, let's just look at the overview of this query. So what it says is that we have, it's an explanation of the different fields. And as mentioned, this query contains data for several supply chain stages. That's why we had to filter out only the first sale and landings section. Furthermore, we used the field month of year, which are the numbers 1 to 12. We also have a field called month, but that's a combination that's unique, uh, unique observations of the combination of year and month. We also have quarter and quarter of year. Okay, so that was the first example. However, first sales data are also available in a disaggregated format. For example, in terms of ERS species and sizes. So we can have more information of the details behind the data. So let us now recreate the example of Turbot in France and take a closer look on the disaggregated data. So we go to data. Advanced table, first sales, this aggregated data of first sales in the EU. As you will see, this view is exactly the same as in the previous database. We have the fields and measures on the left hand side. We will have the filters on the right hand side and the table view in the middle. And now the top bar shows you first sale EU. So this is the database we're currently in. We have the data supply monitoring as last time, and we also have access to the tutorials, um, the help section, which takes you through a guided tour, and the metadata section. Right now it seems a bit stuck, so let's try and reload. Here we go. Okay, so we will repeat what we did last time. Now, as you may have noticed, we don't have the supply chain stage field available anymore. That's because this database only contains first sale, so it's not necessarily to filter out the supply chain stage. So we can add year, we can add country, uh, we also need the main commercial species as a filter. And we want to select only the period from March to July. So we have four filters, year, country, main commercial species, and month of year. Let's start by selecting three years. 
continue with France, the country. We will find Turbot. And we will select months March to July. And as always, we have to hit apply. Now let's build first exactly the same table as we had in the previous example. So we have years in the columns field. We have month of year in the rows section. And we add volume. So this is the same table we had earlier. Now we can drill down using the disaggregated product fields. So here are the disaggregated product fields. So let's first replace month of year. We can remove that field from the table view and we can replace it by ERS size. So here we have the sizes from one to five and we have the volumes of the different sizes. And we see the different months, no, sorry, this is for the whole period, March through July in 2018, 19 and 20. It seems that the volumes in 2020 have reduced relatively more for the larger sizes, size one and two, than for the smaller sizes, sizes three to five. So what does that really mean, these size codes? Well, let's check out the metadata to find more information. So we go to products specifications. Here we have first a section for the first level of data. We can scroll down to the second level of data. And here you'll find more information about the different ERS definitions. The list of all codes are defined in the master data register of the European Commission. And the metadata here provides a link to both the master data and other relevant sources. So here you can drill down and find more information about the data, the sources, and of course our harmonization. Now, maybe it would be better to look at this in a chart. So let's try. And we need again to toggle the data labels. And by changing to year and changing to month, we clearly see the relatively larger decline in volumes of the larger sized fish compared to previous years. So the drop in 2020 is larger for the larger sized fish than for the smaller sized fish. In all the different advanced table queries, the data can be downloaded as shown in the previous example. But by downloading now in the chart view, the file will contain an image of the chart. And if you're interested in the underlying data, you have to go back to cross tab before downloading the data. Now, let's look at a third example. Let's look closer at the import and export data. Now, Ireland is a large exporter of crab and mainly brown crab, and a fair share are exported live or fresh, which is a typical Horeca product, both inside and outside the EU. Let's investigate how the closure of Horeca and travel restrictions might have affected this trade flow. So what we want to do is look at the monthly Irish export of live or fresh crab, let's say over the past two and a half years. So again, we start at the main page 
we can either go to data page in the left hand side menu or directly to the supply chain stage in the top menu so let's try this now let's go to import export and choose advanced table monthly european union Now we're back to the monthly European Union database and we have to add a filter to define the supply chain stage. And we want to limit to years. And we want to add a filter for crab, so the main commercial species. We also want to look at only live or fresh, so we need to add preservation as a filter. We want to look at Irish exports, so we have to filter on country. And finally, in the trade data, we also have to filter whether to look at import or export, intra or extra EU, and we can also filter on which partner country. So who are they trading with? So for now, let's just add the flow type because we want to look at Irish exports. Okay, so we now have a large list of filters and we can start at the top by choosing import export as the supply chain stage. We then select the last three years We select the main commercial species crab. We find Ireland as the country. We want to look at live or fresh. And finally, we want to look at export. And we hit apply. Okay, so now build the table. We start, as in previous examples, by looking at the matrix of year and month of year. We then add the volume. Now, clearly, the closure of Horeca and limited freight capacity has had a large impact on the Irish exports of live and fresh crab. See the difference between February, March, April and May in 2018 and 19 compared to 2020. And July is hit even harder. Now, let's also add the value to see the effects on the value Okay, an error. Let's try and right click and add to columns. Yes, so now for each year we have volume and value. And you can change this view by changing or moving a year after the measures. Then you will have first all years with the volume and then all years with the value. So you can toggle and change the appearance of your table by moving the fields and measures. Now in cross table view like this, this can be a bit confusing because you have to compare different columns in different rows. Uh, it's, it can be a bit difficult, at least I think so. So let's again go back to the chart view. Now, as we remember from earlier, we have to toggle the data level to view more details. So let's look at all, yes. 
And this is still confusing, I think. Uh, there's a lot of different colors and bars. So let's change the view again to a dual axis with both bars and lines. Now, here you get an error message saying that you can only have uh, two or more measures in the columns field, and then you have to move all the fields down to row. So it's quite explanatory. Uh, and by moving year, we should finally get the view we're looking for. Now, we see clearly the drop in both volume and value in 2020. But let's compare the first half of 2020 with the first half of 2019 and 2018. So again, we need to add an additional filter. We add month of year as a filter. And this time, instead of clicking all the different months we are interested in, I'll show you how to change the selection method. If we can only get month of year as a filter. It doesn't seem to be working right now. It's trying to, perhaps you're all testing this yourself uh, and stressing the capacity. Uh, let's hope it works now. No. Okay. Um, it's not that important really because you saw how we could add a filter and change the view in an earlier example. So let's move on. Um, what is interesting in the trade data is perhaps the unit of measures. So again, let's look at the metadata because what sort of unit of measure are used in the different data? So, first of all, volumes are expressed in kilograms, and it's the net weight or product weight. Values are expressed both in euro and local currencies. And prices are expressed only in euro per kilo. Now, import prices are reported CIF. That is short for cost, insurance, and freight. So the seller delivers the goods cleared for export on board the vessel at the port of shipment. The seller also pays for the transport of the goods and for a minimum insurance coverage. The buyer assumes all risk once the goods are on board the vessel. However, they don't take on any cost until the freight arrives at the named port of destination. So the prices for import are measured as they arrive in the EU. Now, exports are reported FOB, which is short for free on board. So the seller clears the goods for export and ensures they are delivered and loaded onto the vessel for transport at the named port of departure. The buyer takes over all risks and costs, including import clearance and duties, as soon as the goods are loaded onto the transport vessel at the port of departure. So this means that we compare prices of both imports and exports at the point of arrival for imports and at the point of departure 
from the EU. Now, as you can see in the last sentence here, you can also create new calculated measures. Uh, this is explained in the user guide, and you can look at the video tutorials to find out more. Okay. So, we've now showed examples of the production and trade parts of the supply chain. For the last example, let's look at the last supply chain stage, consumption. So EMUFA collects monthly volumes and values of household consumption of fresh fish products in 10 EU member states from Europanel. Until 1st of February this year, data was also collected for the United Kingdom, so historical data includes 11 countries. The data originate from representative household panels that record volumes and values of every item purchased. Now, with the closure of Horeca during lockdown, at-home consumption of seafood increased, especially durable goods such as frozen, dried and salted. Even though the available consumption data only concerns fresh products, let's see if we can find indication uh, of increased household consumption. So the data are available through a simple table. So we chose choose the retail consumption section, the simple table and monthly data. Uh, for supply chain stages with several simple tables, you will have more links here, but for consumption, there's only one. So let's follow the link to household consumption. Now, a simple table is, as I mentioned earlier, a predefined query with a limited set of options of adjustments for the user. In this table, we can select country, year, and month. For this example, let's start with the available months, January to June, in 2020, in Portugal. As always, we have to hit apply. Now the results are three tables. The first one is volume in net weight. The second one is values in thousand euros. And the third one are the average prices, which is basically value divided by volume. Now remember, this is not the complete picture, but it shows household consumption of fresh fish products based on household panel data. If we look at the total row here, we see increased household consumption in March, April, May and June compared to January and February. But can this only be a result of seasonality? So let's compare with the same months in 2019. So we go back to our filters, select 2019 as well and hit apply. Now, this table just became a lot longer. But we have months one through six in 2019 and one through six in 2020. So let's look at compare January to January and so on. So we see also in 2019, there is an increase in March, perhaps due to Easter holidays. Uh, and then a decline again in April and consumption levels are about the same in May and June compared to February and January. Now in 2020, the decline isn't that obvious and the volumes are still higher in April, May and June compared to both January and February and the last year, the same months in the last year. 
So this could be an indication of COVID-19 effects from closed Horeca. As usual, more information regarding the table and data source is available in the metadata. So for example, say we are curious of the sample sizes of the household consumption panels, as well as which countries and main commercial species are included in the data. So we want to look at the type of data and sources. And here we have some information about the source we collected from your panel and for more details and the composition of panel sizes, let's look at the dedicated metadata section, data collection. And we have a link here, so let's follow the link. Now, this is another one of our documents on the metadata, and we want to look at private information providers and the type of data collected. So we can scroll down to find specification on consumption data collected from Europanel. So if we look at the sample sizes or the samples details, we see that Portugal has a sample size of 4,000 households. And it includes the total Portuguese area excluding Madeira and the Soros Islands. Furthermore, for each country, you can look at which main commercial species are covered. And for Portugal, here's the list. Okay. So as for the other queries we've been looking at, you can also download the data here in all three different formats. All right, that concludes the practical demonstrations. Uh, now we have time for some questions, so I will leave the floor to my colleagues. Hi, hi everyone. Um, it's Alessandro from uh, the UMOFA team. I'd like to thank Eric for this uh, very informative and uh, comprehensive overview of um, UMOFA. Uh, and I think that we answered all questions in writing all questions received so far. So for the first time in the history of webinars, we uh, don't have any questions right now. I think it either means that uh, nobody cared or that Eric was too clear. And I'm inclined for the second option. So Eric, it's your fault. You should be less clear next time. Um, you know, we're actually, we're actually receiving some questions right now. And I, I also encourage everybody, we have still 10 minutes left. So it's a once in a lifetime, lifetime opportunity to, to get live feedback from you MOFA experts. So if you want to ask a questions, this is the right moment. And of course we need to improvise a bit because these questions are coming in right now. So, um, okay. Um, um, is there, first question is, is there any copyright issues with using your data tables in published documents? I can answer this. No, there's no copyright issues. We, uh, the commission is moving to um, Creative Commons license, so you can use it, um, provided that you uh, acknowledge UMOFA and the primary source. And there's um, a, a, a privacy policy, uh, legal notice and privacy policy that Eric, maybe you can show them uh, where to reach it in the bottom of the of the homepage. Yes, yeah. um, you can find more information here. Um, and I see that now people have uh, waken up and now we have lots of questions. So um, another question is, is there any data about uh, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing? Uh, no, there isn't. Um, then there's a question uh, regarding operation of the external fleet. Is this data also uh, gathering the activity outside the EU? 
Um, they, maybe this is uh, requires a bit more elaboration. Uh, Eric, would you like to answer this question? Um, I'm not 100% sure about the details, but uh, as long as the um, as long as as the first sale uh, is recorded um, in an auction um, within the territory of the country or the member states, uh, I, if I remember correctly, it should be reported to, to EMOFA and be included in the data. Uh, unfortunately, there is no field or possibility to filter and look at the difference between uh, the different fleets. Okay, thank you very much. Next question is, are you confident in your raw data? I'm in Ireland and I'm surprised that BIM is the Irish source and not a Marine Institute or SFBA. I think that maybe uh, Diletta could uh, could answer that. Diletta, would you? Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, yes, please, please. One. Yes, the source for uh, Irish data is um, is uh, BIM, BIM, but uh, BIM take uh, takes data from the Marine Institute of SFPA. Thank you very much for this for this answer. Um, another question is this one is to is for Eric. Uh, I would like to know the difference of first sale in kilograms and landings in kilograms. I read the document, but still it's not clear. Okay, uh, let's see. I cannot answer that from the top of my head. Um, so landings are reported in net weight, so in product weight. And so are uh, first sale, so they should be comparable. Uh, Very, I don't know if that answers your question, but if uh, if the fish is landed, say, uh, gutted, um, then the weight of the fish, excluding the guts, is the one that is reported in landings, uh, and it's the same issue for first sales so if the if um, the landing is reported as gutted to the um, or, or that's what's available in eurostat um, and it's sold as gutted in the auction as well uh, the weight is comparable very good uh, thanks a lot so this was the last unanswered question Oh, no, wait, there's another one. Uh, do you have archived copies of the country profiles? I'm thinking specifically of the latest UK country profile prior to leaving the EU. Valentina, would you like to answer this question? Uh, well, we have an archive with uh, previous country profiles, so also the UK is one of these. But I don't know if it's if it can be used for analysis because it's quite with, with all data. Okay. All, all, data, all data included in it has, are very old, so I can suggest to Susanna to download again data from the website and for uh, information not provided in the queries, you can contact us and we will give you the answer. Perfect. Thanks a lot. So um, that was the last question. And be, before we um, before we leave, um, please remember that, uh, as Valentina said, if you have other questions while you're using your MOFA, just write an email and um, our staff will always be there to help. Um, I, I would like to, oh, and also please note that a recording of this webinar will be available online soon. Um, you will receive a link and also, uh, also on um, all the questions, uh, a report with all the questions and answers. Um, I, th I hope we shall see each other soon for a new webinar. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to thank um, Eric, the rest of the UMOFA team, the European Commission for organizing this webinar. Thank you very much, everybody. Until next time.